Hello and welcome to another edition of Press Road, joined as always by Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, I'm Matt Finkel. Guys, got to start with the instant classic that was the 2016 Lima Cup. What a game. Lima Senior 54, Lima Central Catholic 52 on Xavier Simpson's game-winning buzzer beater. What's the major takeaway one day later? Have, have we taken it all in? Has it sunk in yet? Whose voice has fully <laughs> recovered? Because mine has. Uh, let's see here. Not, not a full voice. <laughs> Two and a half hours sleep. The adrenaline was still rolling. That you was know, fun. You know, we were over at Lima Senior earlier this afternoon for Jalen Thomas's verbal announcement. And he, you, there's still a buzz around Lima Senior as well. And there, there's a buzz throughout the community. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway was it was a fantastic night of high school basketball in Lima. Two teams competing against each other. A great game. Back and forth. Lots of momentum switches. And I, the, the biggest winner for the entire thing was just Lima basketball community because a very good game. Either team could have won that game. Lima Senior had the last possession. X made the game-winning shot. He did. It was just an outstanding basketball game. We called it the Instant Classic. Guys, it's right up there for me in my top five of games witnessed. Um, that number one is still Lima Senior Elida from 1999. But the, this one, when it's all said and done, get back to go to watch it again, to listen to it again. It might be right there next to it. I mean, it was just an outstanding game. And I want to give you guys kudos here at WOSN. You guys did an outstanding job uh, last night with the live broadcast for the first time since 1984, a live television broadcast with local production of a high school basketball game. That was Lima Senior Middletown, which was a pretty hype game as well. And, you know, technical issues aside, you guys were absolutely incredible. So you, you WOSN guys, which I'm honored to be a part of on a little bit basis, you guys a little more so. You guys did awesome. It was really, really cool to see this, you know, as you said, Lima wins again. Yeah, I'll tell you the thing that it points out to me is the folly of all the years when these teams did not play and the problems or whatever stopped it. Luckily, that all got swept aside 14 years ago and uh, these schools reunited, so to speak, and with the Lima Cup as the bounty. And really a classic game, as you guys said, and really impressive with all the pressure all the hype, all the intensity, that how well the teams played and executed, and uh, just a great way for this town to be represented. We always talk it up around the state how good the hoops is here in Lima, and you know I, I stop and think now with you're looking at how many Division One athletes on the floor at one time during that game from both sides. Uh, this may be, and it's saying a lot with the run of athletes we've had in this city at one time or another. This class of 2016 collectively may be the biggest group of stud athletes in the history of this town. Yep. You know, a two-point game, so many little things that could have gone either way that changed the thing. You know, LCC switching to that zone defense midway through the second quarter, a huge tactical, tactical move by Frank Kill that paid off because it really took Lima Senior out of their rhythm, got the momentum back to LCC. Ethan O'Connor hitting that three-point at the end of the first quarter to give some momentum to the T-Birds. Xavier, not only the buzzer beat at the end of the fourth quarter, but he had a layup in the final seconds of the third quarter. That was a big play. Thomas Williams, huge off the bench for LCC. And, of course, DeMonte Lyles, the spark plug he provided for the Spartans coming off the bench in the fourth quarter, came in, played tight defense, forced some turnovers, and that was what gave the Spartans back the momentum in the fourth. Talk about another thing, too, was the Dantes Walton dunk where the technical foul was called for him hanging on the rim. You know, there was a couple of guys underneath him. That call could have gone either way, you know, no call or a call. Kind of hard for me to tell based on my view, and Mark, I was basically right next to you. It was hard, hard to tell. You had a monitor. You guys had a little bit of a better view of it, but that was also a momentum swing because yeah. the T-Birds had gotten up at that point 28-22, Following that dunk, X comes down, hits the two technical free throws as well. But just that atmosphere. I mean, when they opened those doors at 5 o'clock, guys, it was pure bedlam at Monsignor Herd Gymnasium. The one thing I'll say about the technical was there was no doubt, there was no hesitation from the referee. He quickly called it, saw that Dantes, in his opinion, brought his knees up. Now, I'm sure Dantes would tell you that he did it to avoid, I think it was Keaton Upshaw underneath him. But there was no hesitation by the official. He called that technical right away. And Dantes was in full motion, too. I mean, on, you know, running middle of that lane, and he went up with, you know, as Dixon dished it off. I mean, it's not like he had the chance to slow himself, brace himself for a one-handed punch. I mean, this was in transition, two-hand, big boy dunk, 
at full speed, and that was like watching a raging bull run down the floor. And Rico had a pretty nice throw yeah. down. Rico well. had a very nice dunk as well in that same on that same rim mm -hmm. in the same lane also. I was going to mention Rico's dunk. I can go on and on. There's plenty of moments to talk about, but if you missed any of it, by the way, we're going to replay it throughout the week here on WOSN, including a number of times tonight, Wednesday evening. But one other point I'd like to make, yeah. you know, there's a lot of sniping between certain elements of the two fan bases. And to me, the best part about the Lima Cup, the best part about the LCC Lima senior basketball situation right, right now is Frank Kill and Quincy Simpson, the two coaches, have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Mm -hmm. They enjoy each other's company. They don't allow all the outside voices to affect what they're trying to do. They get along really well, and there's respect between the two of them. They had a nice conversation before the game started. And regardless of what happens in the future with those two, that's something we can point to towards this rivalry being a good thing. Nice mention of the future there, as Frank has announced as we tape this, uh, is going to take over as the new Lima Central Catholic Athletic Director, effective May 15th. He'll transition into the role starting at the beginning of February alongside Ron Williams. They will work as sort of a, sort of a co-AD perspective. Ron will maintain the title, but Frank's going to get, you know, he's going to dive into some things, but Ron's going to help him along because Frank's still got a good eight weeks of basketball, good Lord willing, to handle as the varsity head coach, and he will be staying on as the coach. And Todd, you talked about it on social media. This really seems to squash those rumors that Frank could potentially be moving on. You know, the other thing, Mark, you talked about the sniping. Those were the idiots that caused the hiatus in them playing people like that. So yep. good point to tune them up. As far out. as I know, there was no incidents or anything at the game last night. Right. It, the, it, only, the worst thing that happened, counterfeit tickets. Yeah. Oh, Lord. You didn't know. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. were. There were counterfeit tickets last night. I believe there was four that I'm aware of at the back door by the locker room. Wow. Counterfeit tickets. Welcome to high Which school basketball. Which only goes to show you the demand. And the last thing I want to say about it is when you write the story of Xavier Simpson's high school career, like we've seen it play out and how he played his first two years in that gym, to come back in the Lima Cup in the biggest game that he's played in to this point and hit the game-winning shot the way he did, it was really a special moment. And the only thing left for him to do is to go win a state title. The biggest game he's played in as a Lima Senior Spartan. To this as point. a Lima Senior Spartan, right. Yeah, he's 4-0 yeah. in the yeah. Lima yes. Cup. And whoever at, he is, at LCC, keeps yes. winning. Yeah. Guys at LCC, at Lima Senior, he makes that shot. You move that game to a neutral site, I'm not convinced he makes that shot. <laughs> he knows how to shoot in those gyms. He's been there before many yes, times. Yes, he has. So a very exciting game with the Lima Cup. And like I mentioned, you can watch it this week throughout the week on WOSN. All right, now, how are we going to follow it up? What games are we looking forward to <laughs> this weekend, We're Friday not. and Saturday? <laughs> hey, you know, that, that's the one thing. You know, everybody that played the same night as the Lima Cup got forgotten, although there were some halfway interesting things. Perry. The Perry's went over yeah. Bath. And now this weekend, frankly, there's a paucity of real interesting games. It's just one of those weekends on the schedule where it turns out that there's not that much going on that's of huge importance going in. And now, with the Lima Cup having happened, they seem even more mundane. But something important will happen. We just don't have as good an idea in advance as we usually do. If Elida can win over Shawnee on Friday night, there's a very real possibility, based on what's left in the WBL schedule for Elida, that they can finish the league schedule above 500. So Elida playing with that with an injury. Drew Sarno out with a broken wrist and the other, you know, movements that we've had, so to speak, with Elida the last couple of weeks. The youth movement is officially in full swing with Denny Thompson's team. He's had four JV guys from the beginning of the year that are now full-time varsity players. Could be a big win for the Bulldogs if they can beat Shawnee. How about Lakeview? They got to go to Jefferson yep. and uh, avoid a letdown there. Well, and you got you got Trey Smith who, you know, had 36 against Pandora Gilboa last Saturday. He needs 37 <laughs> points to become the all-time leading scorer in Van Wert County. Delphus Jefferson technically is located in Van Wert County, so Trey Smith something to keep an eye on against Lincoln View on Friday and then continuing forward for the Jeff Cats. But, you know, very interesting scenarios going on in the BVC and the Putnam County League. A lot of teams with just oh, yeah. one league losses, yep. so those are wide open races. In the MAC this week, you've got Coldwater hosting Versailles. Coldwater, the only undefeated team in the MAC. Tigers right on their tails, if you will, with one league loss. So Versailles doesn't have that many league games left. So this is a huge game in the MAC this weekend. And a great win for Coldwater earlier this week over Marion Local, and now uh, they start to catch up in number of games and that compression of the mm -hmm. schedule later. Uh, they need to recuperate quickly. Along the lines of the great wins, how about last Friday night, that win over Fort Recovery, that 85-80 yes. game uh, at home at Coldwater. Uh, the Cavaliers are looking pretty good. They might be playing for a seed mm -hmm. for the sectional draw come Super Sunday. Man, the, well, they had the shot clock. 
at cold water for that 85. Is that why it was so game. high scoring? Is that what it was? <laughs> is that, I don't know. They must have been testing oh, no, it out. No, they didn't. Okay. I'm sorry. Forget yeah. it. It is there, possible that, to score the, that many the points. The charge arc was also in there too, by the way. Minutes oh, yeah. good. Good. All right, moving on now. Ada is going to retire Zach Dysart's number this weekend. Who in our area deserves this honor next? Wow. I, I actually, number five? Yeah. <laughs> from the Lima Cup. Are you I mean, Xavier Simpson? That's going to be a while in the yeah. future, maybe. Well, but, uh, I, ex I wrote about this a couple of weeks ago as far as just from a basketball perspective, and right off the bat, Travis Walton and uh, Jamar yeah. Butler yeah. both immediately came to mind. Um, number 14 at Lima Central Catholic, I think, should be retired uh, in honor of Aaron Hutchins, most notably to wear that, but several yeah. great players. Bruce Hodges wore number 14. Several other guys down the line that wore the number 14. I feel that that's a number that uh, should be hanging from the rafters as well. But uh, those three were the really top of mind that I hit on a few weeks ago. But it's really cool that Zach Dyson's going to receive this honor. He was at the Lima Cup sitting with Mike Fell. You know, and Mike makes no qualms about it. That's his boy. You know, he, he is uh, extremely happy for Zach, and he's got a great opportunity, you know, with Miami potentially too. See, I, I'm a little bit of a split mind on the entire retiring numbers thing. You look at what's happening with the New York Yankees. They're running out of numbers. They've retired Single so digits, many guys they're numbers. completely done. Pretty well, much. technically, two hasn't been retired well, yet. Well, you know it will be. <laughs> but, it's common. you yeah. know, I'm, I'm all for honoring people. And, and, you know, certainly some of the NFL teams will have their, their ring of honor. Well, they'll honor the player and show their number, but they won't necessarily retire the number. Ohio State football will no longer retire numbers, but they will right. honor players. It's a great honor for Zach Dysart, and there's certainly a lot of kids in the area, and now that are men and women in the area, who, who deserve the honor as well. But... I almost wonder if it isn't better just to put a jersey up on the wall and honor him that way than officially retiring that number. Yeah, I think you're right. That's the prudent thing to do. And, you know, it's like anything else. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And a lot of places have overdone it with retiring numbers. And some other people have adjusted by calling it a ring of honor or things like that. So, and I, I do think that's the good way to go. But, you know, there are at times some athletes and personalities who are so transcendent that really they almost deserve to have the number retired and uh, I guess they'll reserve judgment for each individual case but uh, there are a few that deserve that and I guess Zach Dysart at Ada might be one of those. What I see a lot at the high school and college level is a great player comes through wears a specific number and then somebody younger wants to wear that number to emulate that player and that's what you right. lose when you retire it but like you said it is an honor. Well, look at number 36 at Ohio State. Right. Gratishar, yeah. Merrick, uh, Cousineau, Spielman, Brian Earl, great linebackers of 136 yep. at Ohio State. You and you can say 44 for Syracuse. That was, we, we that was Syracuse's Brown number, and, yeah. And uh, Ernie Davis. Ernie Davis. Yeah. All right, let's finish with some girls basketball now. Girls draws are coming up this weekend. Who do you think's got a chance to make a deep postseason run? Out of the... Oh, I, got I, I, I like the county. I like the first initial of the school. Yes. I'm going to go Ottawa Glandor. Yes, I agree with Runners you. Runners up last year, and I think the Lady Titans will be able to make another deep run this season for the girls. You know, I think maybe in some ways OG is better than they were last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends maybe sometimes on the draw. They're up in two this year, so the, the matchup Bath has had the last five years with Rodgers maybe yeah. awaiting OG, although I guess one of uh, Rodgers' players signed a free agent contract at Notre Dame or St. Ursula or one of them anyway. Um, I, but Ottoville, Are you saying there's recruiting going on in Toledo again? Not at all, not at all. Uh, Ottoville, I like that uh, because they're still a young team, yep. right? And they've been pretty highly touted coming into the year. They've lost to a couple of very good teams. Well, and, it's, and I believe St. Wendelin would be waiting for them once again. Right. Yeah. Maybe this is the year Ottoville can break through again to get back to state. But Division Four, the neighborhood is tough. I mean, Arlington, Columbus Grove, Ottoville. And then also Minster out yes. of the MAC. You, you, can't, you count teams. against a Nance Deck Schulte coach No doubt. Team. So I think D4, there's a real good possibility somebody from our area gets there. And, and I think OG is loaded and ready, and, and they seem poised to make another run. What's interesting about all those teams that you just mentioned, Arlington's undefeated, so they haven't lost yet. But Ottoville's only losses are to Grove and Arlington. Right. Columbus Grove's only losses to OG, and OG's only losses to Ottoville. So they've only lost to each other out of those four Ottoville teams. Ottoville so, beat Minster, too. And Ottoville beat Minster, right. So somebody out of these teams is going to get there, I think. And if the Bluffton Lady Pirates are hitting from outside, yeah. they can beat anybody. That's right. You, they, it doesn't matter. Nine freshmen, 22 freshmen, 
I mean, it's a rarity to see this amount of freshmen playing varsity basketball in this day and age on the girls' side as we've talked, you know, about girls' programs, most notably having issues fielding junior varsity teams. But this Bluffton team is a lot of fun to watch. You know what? It also points out, Matt, from your little round robin on that schedule, nice job by the ADs and coaches to get some scheduling done with other teams they figured would be good get you ready for the tournament. Yep. And in some cases, right, might see again in the tournament. So good, good move there. We're off next week due to National Signing Day, and we'll hope to have some coverage for you on WOSN with a special Signing Day special. So look forward to that. And for that, that does it for this week's Press Row. Enjoy your games this weekend.